Genesis chapter 1, 27. Many of you will have stories of influencing people around you. And we're talking about, we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks, how we influence, when we influence, what we influence, why we influence. But today we're just going to look very quickly through these verses. Genesis 1, 27. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Just very quickly, there are four things there. One, we are created in the image of God. And therefore, each and every one of us is precious to him. All the animals, cats and dogs included, are not created in the image of God. You and I are. There is something very, very unique in all the universe about you and me. And that is that we reflect something of the image of God. He created us male and female. He created us to be community beings. One of the things this verse doesn't say is that a little bit, sorry, a little bit later he talks about male and female and being married. What he doesn't say here is a single male, a single female is going to be isolated and miss out on life because they're not married. What God is saying here is he created us to be human beings that are a community together. Whether we're married or whether we're single, we need a bigger community than just the lives that we live. And that is part of what God has been saying to us today. He wants us to grow closer as a community. The second thing is he gave us authority. It says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Humanity, God has given authority and rule over the earth. And then he goes on, and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And that's the first time God says everything was very good. Each day it was good. This one was very good. And there was evening and there was morning of the sixth day. God rested on the seventh day. He made it holy so that we had a day to worship him. I read this quote. I couldn't find the author. So as I've been saying all week, God gives us managerial authorities to subdue the earth, to nurture and develop it, bring it under control, use it to meet our needs, explore its wonders and cooperate with natural laws. We join with him when we manage creation and advance human well-being. One of the things God has called us to do is to rule over the earth, to influence our living situations. The fall ruined most of that. When, when mankind said, okay, God, we're actually going to live outside of your rule and authority, and we're placing ourselves under the rule of Satan, um, his enemy, the fall ruined a lot of stuff. It caused creation to change. It caused, caused weeds. It caused work to be hard rather than just enjoyable. It broke relationships. It marred everything. 
and it marred the ruling and the authority that we have. What would have been, under the rule of God, a ruling that brought peace and security and love, brought a rule that often brings disharmony, often stirs up hate, and often becomes quite despotic. The, the fall ruined the influence we had. But it didn't change it. So Psalm 8, verse 5 and 6 say this. This is talking of humanity. You have made them a little lower than the angels. The angels are huge, powerful, spiritual beings. We're a little lower than them. But we've been crowned with glory and honor. And you have made them, that's you and me, rulers over the works of your hands and put everything under their feet. We are still to be those who have influence and rule and authority in the earth. Now, quite often, we don't make a very good job of it, but we, our calling is still there. The psalmist looks at, in this psalm, he looks at all the skies and the universe and the beauty of everything. He recognizes the angelic beings, and he says, God, humanity, of all the beings you could have chosen to rule over your creation, You've chosen men and women. And there's a little bit of why. There was a lot to choose from, but you chose them. Matthew 28, 17 to 18. Jesus came to the disciples and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we walk in the authority that Jesus has given to us. Now, I'm having to do this much, much quicker than I'd wanted to. But we have rule in creation. We have the fall that Mars rule. Then we have Psalm 8 affirming, as does much of the Bible, that humanity continues to rule even though it's not perfect. And Jesus coming to his people and saying, I am a building a kingdom which I will rule over and you will move in that authority as you walk in life. Have you got that? The problem for many of us is how on earth do I rule in my life? What have I got to offer? If only people knew what I was really like, would they listen to me? What, is, what does God want me to do? Why me? How can I influence the world around us? My life seems so difficult. There are so many challenges. There are so many times when I don't when I don't feel like I get it right. There are times when I know I choose to do that which is wrong rather than that which is right. There are times when I feel like <coughs> I should have done something and I could have done it better and I failed. There are times when I feel like this is what God was telling me to do, but yeah, I didn't want to do it. Or I ran out of time. And there's... <laughs> There's a weight of expectation that we put on ourselves that we should be better than we are. And if only we were better, God would use us more. If only I had a more consistent prayer life, God would use me more. If only I felt I was more courageous in telling people about what Jesus has done for me, then God could use me more. But Romans 5, the Apostle Paul gives us this verse. 
For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man. And he's talking there of Adam and the fall of humanity. One man, Adam, chose to disobey and took humanity outside of the rule of God. And so death reigned. But how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? How do we reign in life? How do we grow in our sense of authority that we have something to say to the world in which we live? How can we overcome this weight of expectation that we put on ourselves? We do it by taking this verse to heart. Paul's argument is, one man destroyed the earth. One man has brought life to humanity. One, ma one man took humanity out of the rule of God. Another brings them in under his reign and authority. And how do we live in that? The first is, we receive it. We can't do it ourselves. We can't work our way back to God. Now we know that. But you and I know as well that most of us have this weight of expectation. If only I was good enough. If only I was better than I am. <coughs> if I was only more extrovert. If only I could keep my mouth shut a bit more. If only I was more gifted. If only... If only I could use my gift. And part of what we do over the years is to lift more and more of that expectation off us so that we receive these two things from God deeper and deeper into our hearts. And the first is the abundant, abundant provision of grace. No matter how many things we do wrong, grace is greater. It makes it, it I don't, sometimes you get confused with that, in that it's like, so what you're really saying, God, is I can do anything I want and you'll still forgive me. And to some extent that is true. And Paul was accused of actually saying to people, look, the more you sin, the more grace you will get. And the more you'll be able to glorify God. That's not what he was saying. But we'll come back to that in a few seconds. So there's more than enough for each and every one of us of grace from God. His forgiveness, his strength, and his power. And grace is something you cannot earn. It's the favor of God. And it gives you the strength that you need to do everything that God wants us to do, including reigning in life. How do we receive this grace? An acceptance of who we are. One of the great <coughs> barriers in Christianity is that we compare one another with each other. I'd hazard a guess, even in this room, there's probably some people thinking, well, I couldn't be like Dave. And you should be glad you can't be like me. And the world should be glad it can't be me. Because if it was me, not much would happen. <laughs> there'd be no paintings, there'd be no music. There'd be a fairly nice kept set of lawns because <laughs> I like cutting grass but God doesn't want you to be like me he wants you to be you and we want you to be you we want to be a community of yous with all our different personalities histories characters backgrounds Don't compare yourselves with each other. 
accept what God has given you. Accept the gifts that God has given us. Learn discipline, not legalism. <clears throat> when it comes to things like Bible reading, prayer, church, church attendance, when it comes to living positively and righteously, legalism would say, I've got to do this to prove that I'm good enough. Discipline says, I'm not good enough, so I'm coming to you for your provision of grace. I'm coming to you, God. I want to talk to you to receive grace. I want to learn your word so that I receive its weight within me. I have an idea of what you're like, what your purpose is in the earth, what you're saying to me. I want to live what you have made me, which is a righteous, pure, holy child of the living God. And I want to reflect that to the world. I don't want to do it to prove that I'm good enough. I want to do it because I know you've made me that. And I want to reflect you in the world that I live. See, the abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness that God has forgiven me and clothed me in robes of righteousness. Why do we want to reign in life? Why do we want to influence the world? We live at, in a world which has always been, but every so often it grows particularly dark. And at the present time, our world feels broken, fractured, and even frightening. We like to think that for the next few years we'll meet here. We don't like to think how many of our youth might be called up into the army to fight for our liberty. But it's growing in the back of all our minds and it's growing in the back of the minds of the people we live with. The other Friday night I was walking home from here. It's about half past nine in the evening. And I passed a group of youth and to be honest, just felt they felt hopeless. They were just sitting on the pavement. One girlfriend was trying to stop her boyfriend beating up her friend's boyfriend. Another couple were trying to calm a situation down over here. But the atmosphere just felt so hopeless, so meaningless. It's a sense where people wonder what really matters. Is it worth going to get an education? Is it just going to put me into huge debt? Can I ever buy a house? What's the point of it all? So many people, their lives have been so altered by COVID and the lack of community and social care. We live in a world that at the present time feels broken, frightening, and not getting any better. Why do we want to influence the world? Because we have a message that is hope, and love, and peace, and healing. And it's only God's people that have that message. No other group, no amount of yoga and meditation, no amount of good well-being can solve the world's problems like Jesus Christ can. No one. And the only way the world is going to find out about it is from us. And the only way that we are going to have the confidence and the strength and the willingness to take the fight is if we know the abundance of grace 
and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ in our lives that will raise us up and make us feel, hey, we are the people that have a message of hope, a message that brings together parties, a message of reconciliation, a message of love in this world. And a little group of 10-year-olds actually changed our head teacher's opinion because it stood up, it stood up together, it took the pain, and it was right as well. Each and every one of us has a part to play in bringing a phenomenal message of hope to the world in which we live. I'm going to need the musicians in a, about a minute. That's a hint, because I know some of them are up there and can't hear. <laughs> They'll be here in a minute. God called humanity to rule over the earth. We stepped out of that, and we've made quite a mess of it. But his plan was always to have another community, another people of God, living under his rule, who would live and reign and bring his kingdom that is full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness and self-control into the world we live. To bring his healing, his compassion into the world in which we live. We are part of those people and we want to be full of his spirit, full of his power, and taking that message to the world.